A dog barks when his master is attacked. I would be a coward if I saw that God's truth is attacked and yet would remain silent. John Calvin. Get in the long tube with a bunch of demons. Do you believe that human beings are demons? No, I do not. And don't you ever say I did. This is my Bible. I am what it says I am. There's probably a, a balance between, I believe you have to know Christ, but I think no. He is. And someone knows this for sure. All of mankind is going to end up somewhere in heaven. My mission really is to just help people of faith, especially, to re-examine this issue, to realize the church has got things wrong in the past. For those who are God by faith in His Son. Corinthians, right? 2 Corinthians 3 7. Victory in the name which is above every name. No exception for rape or incest. Uh, it's an extreme. Right now, bones, ligaments, tendons, in Jesus' name, get out here right now. going to heaven and you know you ain't got no sin in your life, it's a good time to die. Hey, what's going on, everybody? Welcome back to The Master's Dog, episode 73. I am your host, The Evangelical Norm. I feel like I just keep getting too far to the side over here. Sorry. Um, <laughs> re revamp of the, the little bit of the area. Um, Playing catch up today again. Uh, this was supposed to come out last week, but uh, with the crash of my system, um, this is the last time you have to hear me do the disclaimer for the crash of the system. Um, I kind of got behind, had to replace it, and and so on. So we're we're literally playing catch up today. I rearranged some things on my desk here when I put the new computer in, and uh, so again, I'm just a little trying to get my feet back under me doing all of uh this stuff so um this week we are doing master's dog the master's dog is a podcast where i respond to false teachers usually mormons um this started as faith and beliefs refuted refuting the saints unscripted uh portion of their podcast the faith and beliefs portion of their podcasts and then it expanded out to other false teachers false teacher of the week and so on and so forth so um today we are back uh, responding to David Snell and the Saints Unscripted Faith and Beliefs uh, section of their podcast. So he is going to tell us a little bit about how Mormons pray, how Latter-day Saints pray. I was just chastised the other day for calling them Mormons again on Twitter. But, you know, hey, the movie's still out there, Meet the Mormons. As long, until they pull that movie off of the market, I'm going to call them Mormons. And, uh, well, I'm just going to call them Mormons because I was Mormon forever and that's what I do. So, um, with all of that being said, let's go ahead and let David, uh, take us through, uh, talking about how Mormons pray. Hey guys, so I recently realized that we haven't done a Faith and Beliefs episode yet on how to pray. Everybody say grace. Bless this, O Lord. Grace! Or at least how Latter-day Saints pray. That's like Latter-day Saint 101 stuff, so that's what we're going to talk about today. You have no idea how, how appropriate that little clip from the movie Hook was. Um, 
I would say that Robin Williams as Peter Pan actually represents true Christians praying and all the guys who just shouted grace. Uh, they're the LDS, and we'll talk about it. All right, so let's learn how to pray Latter-day Saint style. There are three super basic parts, the beginning, the middle, and end. Beginning, middle, end. Facts, details, condense, plot. Or in other words, we're going to cover how to start a prayer, what to say in your prayer, and how to end your prayer. Luckily, Jesus Christ gave us an example of how to start a prayer in Matthew 6. He taught, After this manner, therefore pray ye. Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. So the first thing you're going to do in your prayer is address God the Father, because that's who we're praying to. If you've heard Latter-day Saints pray, you've surely heard them start out by saying, Dear Heavenly Father. Dear Heavenly Father. Or Father in heaven. Our dear Father in heaven. Anything to that effect is fine. You just want it to be clear who you're talking to. We only pray to God the Father. We do not pray to prophets or Joseph Smith or important historical figures or even Christ himself because he instructs us to pray to the Father. Once you've addressed God the Father, what do you say in your prayer? I don't know what to say. Don't you say anything, George. Say, well, whatever's natural. Well, the first thing that comes into your mind. Say whatever you want, whatever you feel like you should say. The church's website says, as we pray to our Heavenly Father, we should tell him what we really feel in our hearts. Confide in him, ask him for forgiveness, plead with him, thank him, express our love for him. Most Latter-day Saints follow a fairly simple pattern when expressing their thoughts in prayer. Okay, so we'll get to it a little bit here in a minute, but that whole issue of Say what you feel like saying. Um, I mean, we would say that as, as Christians as well. But when we get, and he prays at the end of this. Um, I kind of struggled whether or not I wanted to keep it in or not. I actually am. And I'm going to interrupt him while he's praying. And uh, then we'll, we'll, again, we'll talk about it. But keep that in that simple thing in mind that he just said. Pray for what you want to pray. Pray what you want to pray. Say what you want to say. Um, I think there's a song uh, about that. So, prayer. First, they express gratitude for their blessings. Thank you for the food that mom has put in front of us and stop! Good health, safety, family, friends, things that happened during the day, maybe a little miracle or spiritual experience that happened, whatever you're grateful for. Thank you for providing us with the direct port nitrous injection thank you Amen. 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 after expressing gratitude most latter-day saints then ask god for any blessings they may need please bless that someone will adopt this suit and have a pet unicorn help with a test a speedy recovery from an illness strength to endure trials again whatever you or others may need that you feel prompted to ask for i come before you today to ask you for one thing i want you to kill peter parker <laughs> Our prayers are not memorized or recited from a script, except for ordinance prayers, such as the prayers over the sacrament or when someone is being baptized. Those are different. Once you've expressed Very your different. thoughts and feelings, once again, Christ has given us clear instructions in the scriptures about how to end your prayer. My favorite reference is found in the words of Christ to the Nephites in the Book of Mormon. Therefore, ye must always pray unto the Father in my name, and whatsoever ye shall ask the Father in my name, which is right, Believing that ye shall receive, behold, it shall be given unto you. Pray in your families unto the Father, always in my name, that your wives and your children may be blessed. It echoes New Testament verses like John 16, 23, when Christ says, Verily, verily, I say unto you, whatsoever ye shall ask the Father in my New name, Testament he verses. will give it you. So we end our prayers in the name of Jesus Christ. You'll almost always hear Latter-day Saints use the phrase, In the name of Jesus Christ, Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ, Amen. We do this because Jesus Christ, as our Savior, is also our mediator and advocate before the Father. This principle is encapsulated nicely in what Christ said to Thomas in John 14, 6. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Those are the basics of how Latter-day Saints pray. Now, I'm going to flood you with some miscellaneous information that you might find helpful if you're new to praying like this. There are a lot of things Latter-day Saints do when praying that are more cultural than doctrinal, and you don't have to do it the same way. For example, most Latter-day Saints express reverence when they pray by folding their arms or hands and bowing their heads. Kneeling on the ground isn't a prerequisite, it's just another sign of reverence. You do whatever you think is appropriate. When someone is praying in a group setting, I know that in some faiths it's customary to shout, Amen, Amen. in the middle of the prayer. Latter-day Saints don't really do that, even though, frankly, I think it's kind of cool. Woo! Woo! 
When praying for yourself, you'll use words like I and me. When praying for a group, in a group setting, it's good to use words like we and our. You can say your own personal prayers out loud or just in your head. You can pray wherever and whenever you want, as circumstances allow. I'm trying to pray. You're always praying. Though Latter-day Saints are taught that it's important to pray every morning after you wake up and every night before you go to bed with as many prayers during the day as you want. If you have any questions that I didn't cover, let us know in the comments. And just to give you an actual example of what a Latter-day Saint prayer looks like, I'm going to say a very basic prayer to conclude this video. If you want to participate from your end, you can say amen. 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 amen after me when I end the prayer, which essentially means you agree with what I prayed for and share those same thoughts. Or you can just watch and listen for educational purposes. All right, here we go. Okay, so before I let him do this and interrupt him quite a bit, I always, I tell my daughter it's not appropriate to interrupt prayer. There's a couple of things we have to understand here before he does this. Um, I would never amen a prayer from a Latter-day Saint. Never. Um, and I won't. I'm, I'm not participating in this prayer. I am observing this prayer. Um, one, he talked about people shouting amen during the middle of a prayer. Rarely, I mean, some extreme groups you might. You might hear a mumbled amen at something that, that, and a, that in, hit, affects somebody in, intimately during the prayer. Um, amens and stuff like that are generally done during a sermon. You'll hear stuff like that, but not during a prayer. It's usually amen at the end of the prayer. Um, so I, that was just something that he said that just kind of affected me. But again, I really wasn't sure whether or not I wanted to do this, but I'm going to go ahead and, and let him do this prayer. And then we'll, again, we'll, we'll kind of talk about it as he goes. First of all, you know, again, the Mormons saying they don't pray to Jesus, um, because Jesus told them to pray to the father. But, um, We've had examples through scripture and stuff like that of people who do address Jesus directly in prayer. Um, you know, calling upon Son of Man, uh, so on. And uh, so, G again, I'm getting flustered. Um, understanding who Jesus is and who God is is key to this. The fact that the Mormons do not believe that Jesus is God is the reason behind why they don't pray to Jesus. Because they don't believe, they believe he's kind of divine, some people believe, but he is not God. And so that's why he is the son of God. Understand, and this is why I would never amen a, the, the, a Mormon's prayer. Because one, they're praying to a false God. They pray to a, they're praying to a God, their God, Elohim, is a God who is the offspring of another God, who is an offspring of another God, who is an offspring of another God. We pray to the God who is eternal over all creation, and Jesus is that God. He is part of that triune God. Not, he is, I hate saying part because that almost sounds as if God is divided. He is not. We have the Father, Son, Holy Ghost, one God, three persons, in one God, one being, three persons. Um, Jesus is God. So it is fully appropriate to pray to Jesus if you're praying, because he is God. And so that's just the understanding of who God is. The triune God is revealed in the Bible Father, Son, Holy Spirit, we pray to him. We do not pray to any God who has a father, who has a grandfather, who has a great, great grandfather, and who knows how many beyond that. We do not, that is called idolatry. That is exactly what the, it, the Israelites did when they came out of Egypt and Aaron made their golden calf. That is exactly what uh, Elijah and Isaiah and multiple prophets had warned against praying to idols, creating an idol, any of these things. This is a God that does not exist and cannot answer prayer and cannot offer any kind of salvation. So that is the first thing we need to understand and the, of the greatest importance of why we never amen a Mormon's prayer. Our dear Heavenly Father, we're grateful for our many blessings and we're grateful that we can uh, learn thy gospel uh, in such a fun... Okay, 
That's the other thing. Again, and this is where talking about pray whatever you want to pray. I don't know anybody who talks like this. Thy, the, the, you know, we get great Psalms where we sing this. If you're reading the King James Version, great, you're reading this. This is not how people talk to each other. And this is not how people would really, I mean, if you're praying to God, just pray. Understanding we don't need the these and the thous. This is, and again, this is one of those things where when we look at the, the, uh, the Book of Mormon and the translation and so on, we look and go, it's not likely because there, even in, in the 1800s, there wasn't a whole lot of speaking these and thous and stuff like that. Could have been just the, the influence that the King James has written in King James English and blah, 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 blah. But so, but you would never expect somebody translating ancient Greek today into English to translate yous and that to, into being these and thous. We translate this was King James the way they spoke then. This is not the way we speak now. And so to say, oh, well, you can pray anything. You are literally expected. You will get funky looks. And, and, and again, full disclosure, I haven't been LDS for 20 plus years, 27 years, in fact, um, is when I left the LDS church. So maybe things have gotten a little more lax, but I know then if I heard anybody praying and calling God you and not thou, you'd get, you'd get the stink eye. On a fun medium through the internet, we're grateful to be connected online and and uh, to be able to share our, our thoughts and feelings about thy gospel. We ask thee to help us to better understand thy gospel and, and uh, please help us to learn how to better incorporate the principles of the gospel in our lives. Help us to be, to be more loving, more understanding, more thoughtful, um, and more stalwart in our faith. Help us to um, keep thy commandments more fully and love thee and, and love our neighbor. We love thee, we're grateful for thee, and we say these things in the name of Jesus Christ, amen. Amen. It's that simple, guys. Have a great day. All right, so there you go. There's the, the Mormon prayer. And again, the so some of these things are, are great points in how to pray, you know. You should have a beginning, a middle, and an end. You should address God. You should ask for the things you need. You know, we, a lot of times in evangelical circles, we use an axe or a cast or a, you know, um, you know, any number of ways, but C-A-S-T is, is generally the, um, the, the, and now, or the, oh my gosh, my mind just went break. What are those called? <laughs> um, I lost it. There you go. Uh, yeah, this is what happens. I should be going to bed soon. Um, C-A-S-T. So, confession. Um, and now I can't even remember what all they are. Supp uh, confession. Um, is it adoration? Supplication? Thanksgiving? Um, something that effect. I should have probably looked that up uh, before I threw it out there. Um and uh, yeah, but so we use these things, we use kind of models and stuff. And, and there's nothing wrong with having a formula in how you pray, but it's when you get into like uh, that you have to pray these specific words in this specific way, you start to, to close into like witchcraft and, and so on. Uh, Mormonism, especially with your blessing of the sacrament prayers that he mentioned and baptism. I had to be baptized three times. I had to be dunked three times because the first time he got the words wrong. He did not say the words. And I mean, and it's simple as, uh, you know, I think the, the, the prayer for baptism is Norman Dunn, having been commissioned of Jesus Christ, I baptize you in, uh, in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Something, I mean, very simple. The baptism for the dead is very similar. The praying for the, the sacrament, um, O God, the Eternal Father, we ask you in the name of thy Son, Jesus Christ, to bless and sanctify this bread to the souls of all those who partake of it. And then, blah, blah, blah. And if you screw it up, you look at the, the, the bishop and he's like, do it again. 
do it again, do it again. Um, I watched a, a, a 16 year old kid so flustered and he tried to do it like, I kid you not, like six times before the first counselor came down and, and took over and, and said the prayer right. And, and so, you know, just embarrassed the heck out of the guy. And so, again, when you get that formulaic in your prayer, it, it really is akin to witchcraft. Um, there's nothing wrong with having some formulas to where you can remember how to pray and, um, and so on. But, uh, again, you, you want to have, um, again, just an open, honest dialogue or monologue with God and, uh, and, and set that out. But the most important thing is the object to which you are praying. If you are praying to a false God, a false Christ, representing a false gospel, it is no good. It is pointless and it does nothing for you. And there it is. There's there's the way that the LDS pray. There's a little bit of an, an idea of how evangelicals pray. And um, it's all tied back to who we are praying to. And that's the reason why we have to preach the gospel at all times. And we have to use words because they're necessary. Until next time, Soli Deo Gloria. Mm-hmm.